In our problem, what we have is we have Ericsson Company sponsoring a defined benefit plan. The corporation's actuary provides the following information about the plan. So what we see in exercise 2013 is some very specific information related to the plan. Now let's go through this information and decide what we can use and what is not really necessary. So you notice that the first two items are the vested benefit obligation and the accumulated benefit obligation. While this is good information, this has nothing to do with our calculation. Now, our first numbers are going to be our projected benefit obligation and our plan assets. You notice that we have a beginning balance and an ending balance, and you also notice that there is some information that is missing. But let's plug in what we have and see what we can come up with. Also notice what the problems are that we need to identify in terms of computing the actual return on plan assets. So the assumption is that what you see is that we have an expected return and the question becomes is what happens when the expected return is actually different from the actual return. The other piece of it is you notice that we uh, need to compute the uh, net gain or loss amortization using the corridor approach and then compute the pension expense for 2014. So let's see what we can do and what I found is that the easiest way to work through this problem is using the template model that we've used before. Okay, so let's kind of walk through this and see what we know. Now you notice as I walk through this is that I always use a credit or a negative number for a credit a transaction and, and a positive number for a debit transaction. So you notice here that our projected benefit obligation is $2,500. So the $2,500, even though it's not a journal entry in our books, represents a credit balance account. So we have a negative balance here at the projected benefit obligation. Our plan assets is $1,700, and that's going to be over here, $1,700. And our beginning balance of our liability is going to be the difference between the two. So if we actually just sum the positive and the negative number, we're going to get the difference. And what you see here is the difference is $800. And it's a credit balance, which implies that it's a liability. And that's exactly what we see here is $800. Okay, so we have some uh, ending balances and we also have some other information. So let's plug in the information and see what we can come up with. So let's see here. We have the service costs for the year of $400. The service cost is going to go here of $400. That's going to be a debit transaction. The credit is going to increase our projected benefit obligation. You notice the next item is the settlement rate is 10%. So the settlement rate, and this is going to be a... Uh, a positive number, so I'm putting a negative sign in front of it, is going to be 10% times our $2,500 projected benefit obligation. So our interest cost is $250. That's debited to our annual pension expense, and it's going to be credited to our projected benefit obligation. Now, what we have is we have the expected return and the unexpected gains and losses. So as we know is that what we are recording as our pension expense is the expected rate and the difference between the actual and the expected is what we call our unexpected gains and losses. So that's going to be plugged in our other comprehensive income in our gain and loss um, column. So let's look at what the expected rate is. So the expected rate is 10% and it's going to be 10% times the plan assets. Now, anytime we have a gain, it's going to be a reduction in our pension expense. So this is $170, which is 10% of the $1,700, and because it is a gain, it's actually going to increase our plan assets. So we have $170 here. Okay, so let's plug in some other numbers that we know. We know that we contributed $700, so the contribution is going to be in cash, and we are crediting our $700 over here, 
and at the same time we are going to debit our plan assets and again we're th these are all memo record accounts so these do not show up on our balance sheet but they work just like debit and credit accounts okay so we have the reduction the credit in cash and uh, we have the debit to our plan assets and you see that the journal entry here is seven hundred dollars okay you notice the next item is benefits paid well anytime we pay benefits the benefits are going to be paid from plan assets and they're going to represent a reduction in our projected benefit obligation because we no longer have that obligation so we're going to debit our projected benefit obligation and we're going to credit our plan assets okay so this is what we have thus far now let's look at the other items and make sure that we see where the additional information is so we have the ending balance for the projected benefit obligation and we have the ending balance for the plan assets so let's look at the ending balance for the plan assets so the ending balance for the plan assets is two thousand six hundred and twenty dollars so if we go two thousand six hundred and twenty dollars minus what we have right here was two thousand three hundred and seventy we have a difference of two hundred and fifty dollars well what this means is that two hundred and fifty dollars is the unexpected gains and losses and it represents the difference between the expected rate and the actual rate. So we're going to plug in the $250 here and what this means is that the actual rate of return is going to be the $170 plus the $250. Okay, so that's $420. So that's our first question is what is the actual rate of return is $420. So you see here that our ending balance is $2,620 which is exactly what it should be. Okay, so the question becomes is what happens to that $250? We've got the debit. Where is the credit going to be? Well, any time we have this unexpected gains and loss, is this is going to show up as other comprehensive income gains and losses. And as we've talked about is this other comprehensive income essentially is a holding area within the equity section of the balance sheet. And we're essentially smoothing out the activity related to the annual expenses uh, for the pension plan. Okay, so let's kind of look at this. So we actually made more than we expected. So we made an additional $250. So this is actually a gain for our unexpected gain. So we have a credit here of $250. We have a debit over here to plan assets of $250. So are we done? Well, let's look at the additional number that we need to consider. And you see that the projected benefit obligation at the end of the year is $3,300. Okay, so let's kind of consider this. We have a, so far, an ending balance of $2,950. So let's see what we've got. So if we take $3,300 and re reduce this by our projected benefit obligation, we have $350. So what does this mean? Well, there is a increase in our projected benefit obligation that we have not yet accounted for. And where are we going to account for that? Well, we're going to account for that in our pension gains and losses. And let's talk about this in terms of what this means. So this is going to be a minus 350. And this it's a minus 350 because we are crediting the projected benefit obligation. We are increasing the obligation. So what does that mean? Well, that means that, in fact, the obligation is greater. And why is it greater? Well, it's greater. And actually, as I'm looking at this, we have these numbers that are shifted um, down one row. So let me actually make that change up here. So nothing changes except for the fact that they're in the right row. So I have the $350. So what does that mean? Well, this means that, in fact, there was an actuarial change related to the projected benefit obligation. And anytime we have an actuarial change, it's going to stay in other comprehensive income. We did not identify this as a prior service cost. So we're assuming that the actuarial change probably affected the 
uh, final salary at retirement, and this is where the adjustment is. Okay, so it's a it's a increase in the projected benefit obligation, which implies that it is a um, a loss. Okay, so the loss is going to be a debit, and the loss is going to show up over here. Okay, so we're basically done, but let's consider one number to make sure that we are in fact uh, working this correctly. So we notice that the journal entry is we're going to have a debit to our annual expense of $480. We have this plug number that I essentially just uh, included in as a sum. So you notice the sum over here, but the plug number is the increase or decrease in the pension asset or liability. So we're actually lowering the liability by $120. So there's going to be two debit transactions, actually three debit transactions. The first one is to the annual pension expense. The second one is to the other comprehensive income, gains and losses, and then finally the adjustment to the pension liability. And the credit is going to go to cash. Okay, so that's going to be the journal entry. And our ending balance is we have the other comprehensive income of $100 and we have our ending balance of liability of $680, which is a credit account. As we've talked about, the projected benefit obligation and the plan assets are not going to be included uh, in, our, uh, in our balance sheet, but they are essentially just a memo record. Now, let me just make a point related to C. It says to compute the net amount of gain or loss amortized for 2014, using the corridor approach. Well, as we know, the corridor approach is based upon our beginning balance. And uh, if you re recall reading through the information related to the case, the gains and losses had a zero balance uh, going into this. So we have, we, have no zero, uh, we have a zero balance, which means that we do not have to go through the calculation for the corridor approach for 2014. But well, we do have an ending balance, so for 2015, we're going to have to examine this. However, when we look at this, what we thoroughly see is the fact that the gain and loss is well below a, the 10% of the larger of the two numbers. Okay, so it looks like we probably are not going, we're, not, we're actually not going to have a uh, amortization issue related to gains and losses for the following year, but that goes beyond the scope of this, uh, of this problem. So I thank you very much and you have a good day. Thank you.